when you think of the Old West or the Western lifestyle, what are a few things that pop into your head? Well, of course, cowboys, Indians, guns, Old Western movies, books, and fabulous turquoise. And today on Western Trading Post TV, we're going to be bringing all of that to you. So hold on to your hats and enjoy the ride. <laughs> Wow, Kurt and Cheryl, you guys were in the other day for appraisal day and got the value of some of your items. And uh, we talked about bringing some stuff back for the auction, but wow, look at all this stuff you brought back. What a collection here. This um, is fabulous. Yeah. Like I'm assuming you're wanting to go to auction with this or? Yeah, what we talked yeah, I about think so. auction. Yeah? yeah. Now, now, keep in mind, I, I'm booked up for a couple months. Maybe a couple months before I could get this in an auction. Uh, I'd be happy to make you a wholesale offer on it if you'd like, or we, or we can wait for the auction. What, what do you think? We kind of enjoy the auction. I mean, it's it's fun to watch it sell. Yeah? It's, it's much fun as bidding on it. Yeah, you've it's been, kind of addicting on it. Yeah. It is. Yeah, you know, you've been bidding at our auctions for a long time. And you're kind of an auction junkie, I take it. <laughs> right, but we've, we've had really good luck selling items, too, yeah. at your auctions. So. That's, I appreciate that. Yeah. That's good. That's good to know. Now, how do you decide what to bring to sell? Because you have such exquisite taste, and these are phenomenal pieces. Thank you. It is hard sometimes to uh, pick and choose, but uh, we, Kirk has a good sanity check, and he allows me to kind of go through, and then we decide, and then... We bring them here, and it allows us to uh, buy and upgrade our collection at future auction pieces. Yeah, it's a, it is also amazing that how many pieces go to, this is going to Jim, and when we get here, where's that other piece that didn't go to oh, Jim? It didn't go. Oh. It comes back out. It comes back into the safe for a little bit. I know I right. have a hard time always getting rid of items or trading up. Yes, uh, yes. You, You've got some great, like, you've got a couple of nice vintage bracelets right here, and, and even some good contemporary items, so... You know, if this is your reject stuff, man, I can't wait to see the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, she wears, both of them wear some pretty amazing pieces. Thank so you. You guys do have exquisite taste. Yeah. Thank you. So we're going to do auction then here in a couple auction. months? Yeah, right. I think we're going to auction. I'll get some paperwork out and we'll write it, get it written up. Thank, Thank you, guys. That sounds great. Okay. And, and we deal, we'll definitely see you at the auction, correct? All right. We're all decked out. Yeah. yeah. We, we love have our, coming. We have our eyes on We love things. having you guys. All right. Thank Perfect. You. Thank you. Woo! Ow. Well, I tell you, there's never a dull moment at Western Trading Post. Hey, Bobby Jean. Oh my gosh, my favorite Arizona author, Sylvia. How are you doing? It's so good to see you. It's great to see you, as Thank always. Thank you for bringing these. These have been selling so well. And you know, the movie's been going very well, too, selling good. here. You're working on your next book, aren't you? I am. I'm working on the sixth book in the Kendall O'Dell series. And is it based on a true story? It's based on several. Here in Arizona? I can't make up anything weirder than is in the paper every day. <laughs> but it's all based here in Arizona? All based in Arizona, various settings around Arizona. Can you I even me? mentioned Casa Grande in this last one. Really? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about the book? Uh, I can't tell you a lot because it would give away the ending, and, and everybody knows the endings will just blow your mind. No, I know. Is it so hard to keep it a secret? It is, you know, and it's difficult because I already know the ending when I start. So I have to pretend I don't. <laughs> oh, you do such an amazing job. And you, you know that Deadly Sanctuary has been my favorite book so of far. Of course. Only because of the movie? Yes. Yeah. Was that a dream come true when we filmed Deadly Sanctuary? It was. Yeah. We had Daniel Baldwin, Dean Cain, Eric Roberts... And I got to act side by side with these amazing actors and 
play a bad guy, which I don't know why you chose me for that. It's because you were a bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, my beautiful friend, I appreciate you always Thank dropping you. these off and stopping by to just say howdy and keep us supplied in your book. Sure, I can anytime. hardly wait to see your next book. Read it, and hopefully we can see these move all these books turned into movies or TV series. Wouldn't that be fabulous? It would, and you'll be in all of them. Ooh, okay, we better start working then, girlfriend. Right now. <laughs> well, I'll get a check for you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, and you keep up the great work of promoting Arizona. I will. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Earlier today, Tiffany Selchow called and asked if she could come by and interview me for an article she is writing about squash blossom necklaces. So Tiffany, you're writing an article for Paul Ramirez's new magazine. I am, yeah, for the Western Ag Life magazine. I'm oh, really excited to, to work on this. All right. So I brainstormed and, you know, I, squash blossoms are something I've always loved and mm -hmm. something that have been in my family and so I wanted to learn more about them. Well, I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. I appreciate that. So in my research, I think um, something I've been a little confused about and want to learn more about is the beads. I've seen the term benchmade and handmade. What does that all mean? So that's an excellent question. So there's basically there's three different kinds of beads you might find on a squash blossom necklace. One would be a machine bead. One would be what they call a benchmade bead, and the other would be completely handmade. Now, handmade is the highest and best form of bead. Like this old 1920s era squash blossom necklace here has completely handmade beads. That means the silversmith pounded that silver out, he domed it in a little uh, form, and then he soldered each half together. Okay, wow. I mean, he did it from scratch. Uh, one of the um, signs that you can tell a handmade bead, like on this old necklace here, is where the leather goes through each bead. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like a belly button. And it has an Audi. Oh, that's right? funny. Okay. So the hole, you know, goes out right yeah. there. And that's where they drove the punch through wow. from the backside to make the hole before they soldered it. Okay. Here's another example. Uh, this is a little later. This is more like a 1960s uh, necklace here. But again, these are handmade beads. They've got the little Audi, mm -hmm. and where the silversmith soldered them together on the seam, you can see it's not perfect, all right? right. Now, a bench-made bead um, is something that's kind of part machined and part, part handmade. Okay. The, uh, you know, they, the silversmith, the, uh, each half is, is done in mass production, right? And then a silversmith comes along, and he sweats them together, or he even sometimes there's a machine that'll sweat them together. Okay. Okay, so that's kind of a mixture of, you know, handmade and, and man-made. And then there's just completely machine-made beads that are, most of them are actually imported. I don't know how they get the machine to make them, but they have machinery that does it. Yeah. Um, and the, the machine-made beads, the, the hole that goes through is always dead smooth. Okay. And they're, the bead is perfect. There's no uh, inconsistencies in it. it ju it's just too perfect. Okay. Obviously, it's machined. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we like a little question. bit of, yeah. of a character exactly, on a beat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. So. so obviously, the other piece on a squash blossom is the iconic nausea. So can you give me some history on that and what the that's The nausea about? Is, is great. I love the nausea on a squash blossom necklace. And from the research that I've done, the, uh, the, the natives that would have first seen the nausea probably saw it on the bridles of the horses the Spaniards rode when wow. they, they came to this part of the world. Okay. And if you go back even further than that, the Spaniards supposedly got the symbol from the Moors. It was like a good luck symbol okay. back then. And from what I understand, the word nausea is Arabic in origin. That is fascinating. Yeah. How so, interesting. Okay. It goes way back, but yeah. it's definitely an iconic part of the squash blossom necklace. The natives adopted it you know, uh, over a hundred years ago, and now it's an iconic part of the necklace. It's a beautiful part of the necklace. All mm -hmm. of it's beautiful. Um, so, so, like I said earlier, my family has definitely loved the squash blossoms for a long time, but it's something that now I'm seeing everybody wear. What's that about? You know, yeah, so it is definitely a fad right now. Squash blossoms are popular. We're actually shipping them all over the world, you know, every day. They're wow. going out like crazy. But here in the Southwest, I don't think they ever went out of style. Um, back in the 70s, there was a huge jewelry boom, and you saw, you saw Cher wearing them. Yeah. You, know, and, you know, all kinds of movie stars were wearing them, and people all over the world were wearing them. And then they kind of went out of vogue for a little while. But here in the Southwest, they never go out of vogue. It's kind of like the bolo tie. 
when you see somebody wearing a bolo tie or a lady wearing a squash, you just immediately it speaks southwest. So yes. that's what's great about about them. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. Thank yeah. you so much for the information. I'm really excited to get working on this article. Oh, and I can't wait to read it whenever it comes out. I'm very excited. Thank you. <laughs> Miss March, what have you got? Betty. Betty. I just picked it up from the foundry. It's the plaque for the mural. Oh. At last. Let me hold her take a peek. Bobby, okay. Jim, Rowdy, come here. Take a peek and see what Miss Marge just brought us. It's going to be like the prototype for the oh. sign oh. Look at this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Is that fun? Oh, it's for the wall. Yeah, oh state of Arizona, a little patina oh. on the back. And it's telling the whole story of everything that's on that mural. Oh, I mean, all, cool. every piece that's yeah. on there. And then it's going to, um, it's thanking the two sponsors and it's thanking the artists. And um, it's a kickoff to our Highway 84 theme. Oh, yes. cool. The, remember the domino here yes. for the Sunset Court sign. Yes. That's going to look so uh, cool park. on our new mural out there. Oh, I can hardly wait. Way. I'm so excited. It's our pleasure. It's thank our pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for all you do for the downtown. Yes, we really thank appreciate you. So you. Much. Um, I I love it. All right. I just love it. Oh, do you want me to set it down, Grams? Yeah. Oh, it's good <laughs> heaven. Oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you again. We okay. truly appreciate it. You are so welcome. Well, it took a little while, but it was worth the wait, wasn't it? It yeah. sure was. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks, okay, okay. See you guys okay. later. See you later. Bye bye. Okay. bye. You're watching Western Trading Post TV on the Cowboy Channel. Hello, everybody. Michael Jackson, what do you have here? I've got a snowy opuntia. What is a snowy opuntia? Except for I know it's a cactus. Well, it's an opuntia, which is a, the largest family of cactus. And it's snowy because it looks snowy, but... It does. Um, it, it's our 88th cactus that we're added to Bedillon's. I had 87 and I saw this and we just keep adding as we find something new then I put it in the collection. Well, you know, I have been doing my little cactus garden at the house after I saw yours. Now, there at the restaurant, you said you have 88 different varieties of cactus? Number 88. And so, how long have they been there? Well, the, it was built in 1917 and I've got communications they've had with Argentina, Peru, and all over the world for, you send me some of your seeds, we'll send you some of our seeds. So a lot of the Peruvian and Argentina were started as seeds back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Yeah. So they're older than we are. Uh, we've got, well, the, the prickly pear is one that everybody is more familiar with. Uh, and it's got a lot of medicinal, uh, in Mexico, it's as stable as beans and rice. You go into yes. any grocery store and they sell it because it's good for cardiovascular, diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, cholesterol, all of that stuff. So it's now, very healthy. your restaurant is world famous. I mean, people come from all over the world to come and see your restaurant. Mm -hmm. It is a museum, a cactus garden. Mm -hmm. and. Hasn't it even been on the cover of Arizona Highways? Yeah, in uh, October of 09, we were, or April of 09, we were the cover of Arizona Highways, so we're the only restaurant in 100 years to, to make the cover. And so we were pretty proud of that, but our food, when I first bought the place in 86, I knew the challenge would be to make the food and the service compatible with the venue, because the venue, there's nothing else like it in Arizona. So I told the staff all the time, our food and service have to be the best. And it is. That is one of our favorite places to go. And I know we have reservations um, tomorrow evening, actually, around 6 o'clock. So I know all of us are going to come in and get to sit outside in the beautiful cactus garden. Well, it's it's a hard venue to beat because of the, the all of the cactus, the saguaros, the prickly pear, the argentinan, uh, the night blooming cirrus. And we have really good service and really good food. So it, it's a, a beautiful place to dine. Well, and this little goodie? Are we going to get to see that one? Oh, in yeah, the that's I'm up there right on the front porch as you come in. Uh, what we've done, we've tried to add. When I bought it, there was probably 60 different types. And whenever we see one that we don't have, we add it to our collection. But growing up here, I thought there was a saguaro, a barrel, and a choya. And everybody knows what a choya is. That's yeah. the one you get in your skin really bad. 
But since then, people have come in and said, you know what that is or that is? So I've learned a whole lot about cactus since I bought the garden. Well, we can hardly wait to see this outside on the patio when we come in. It used to be on the menu when we did breakfast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you sharing oh, that Oh, you're with welcome. Me. My pleasure. I should probably be moseying back to work and get ready for the evening here. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome, dear. We'll see ya. We're here at the Dillon's Cactus Garden Restaurant and Museum, and we are checking out some of the beautiful cactus that are here. But you know you never want to touch them. No, no, no. Earlier today, I had an appointment with Robin, who stopped by with a great collection of fine Native American jewelry. So Robin, you brought a bunch of great jewelry for us to look at today. Wow, how did you get all this? My parents, they had an antique business and they just decided to close it and they said, here, you take the jewelry. So I went on the internet and found you guys and I thought, you know what, I wanna take this somewhere where there's some value placed on what I have. Wow, I am glad that you found us. That, that is amazing. Like, do you, you know anything about I don't. I don't know anything about it. Like, for example, this is a vintage Tommy Singer piece. Tommy Singer is a well-known Navajo artist who passed away in 2014. So he doesn't make jewelry anymore, obviously. This is a high-grade turquoise, big, nice cuff bracelet. Um, this kind of stuff that you brought would do really, really well in one of our auctions. Really? Where it's exposed to a whole bunch of bidders worldwide. Uh, but if you want, I'd be happy to make you a, a wholesale offer on the whole lot today. What, what do you think? No, no, I, I'd rather go with the auction. You want to go with the auction? I do. All right, well, let's do some paperwork and we're going to put this in an upcoming auction Perfect. for you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thousand, two thousand, two thousand, going once, two thousand dollars going twice. I sold it $1,900. <laughs> Seven hundred going twice. So uh, 650 to that 1116, 1116. We actually have a great auction coming up, Bobby Jean. We had one consigner from Colorado who sent us an entire estate, over a hundred lots. A couple of the highlights include this lot 100, which is an antique Plains Indian beaded pipe tobacco bag. And lot 200, which is a vintage, a fabulous vintage snake eye ring with 105 pieces of turquoise. This is going to be a pretty great auction, it's isn't it? It's going to be good. Let's see what happens. Go twice. So good for you, sir, for $250. So good at 508, $425. Five. Look at this. Our Arizona Western film historian is walking through my doors. Charlie, what the heck are you oh, up to? Oh, man, I'll tell you, Bobby Jean. I'm up to a lot, but I want to show you this <laughs> stuff right here. Well, Some of it no good. But, but anyway, oh, I wow. have two items here that I just wanted to bring in and show them to you because I knew you would love them. Now, this one right here is of Rex Allen and Mary Ellen Kay when they appeared together at the National Festival of the West. They hadn't seen each other in about 50 years. Now she was his, his leading lady in six of these 19 films they sang together. So he was kind of like Dale Evans. Exactly. As a matter of fact, she said that she came in the studio as Dale Evans was leaving, you know, to do their television show. Oh, so this wow. is very special because I have it signed by both Rex and Mary Ellen from the festival that they were at together. So this is, this is a big deal to me. This is really something. Now this one, I just got actually before I came in here today. This is a photo of Duncan Ronaldo as the Cisco kid with his horse Diablo. And this would be circa the 1950s. Okay. And it's not made out to anybody, so this is valuable. It just has to my good friend, Duncan Ronaldo, Cisco kid, and also Diablo. Well, and then when you have the original signatures mm -hmm. like that, and it's not made out to anybody, like you said, it's, it's even more valuable. It's more valuable to other people. They don't want your name on it. it exactly. Yeah. But these do very well in our store. You know that. I kind of figured they probably did. <laughs> I kind of That's why I wanted to bring those in and, and kind of wet your taste a little bit uh, for these. Uh-huh. You know how much I love Western <laughs> oh, films yeah. as Absolutely. it is. And Absolutely. I love everything you do to promote them. So um, is there any way I could entice you to You know, them? I was kind of hoping you'd say that and kind of hoping maybe, I don't know what other, but yeah, I was, I was wondering if you were going to say that and I, I did some checking on the prices 
And right now, knowing how enticed you are to get these, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to have to do a little bit of thinking on it because okay. I think they would look good in here. You think? <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll have to think about it just a little bit. But it would, it, it, yeah, I would say uh, two, three thousand dollar neighborhood. Okay, for both of them? No, no, oh. no, 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 oh. no, 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 no. I, I, but, but like I said, I'd have to think about it a little bit. Well, why don't you think about it? Hang them on your wall for a while. But if you will promise to tell me first when you're ready to sell them. Will do. Do we want to make a deal on that That's one? That's a deal. That is a deal. <laughs> you will be the first. And I just want to thank you for stopping by and for all you do again. And we will see you at the film festival. In, How about that? Indeed, indeed. <laughs> and congratulations for your show. Oh, thank you. Oh, I can't forget these, though. So I know you were hoping I'd forget them, but I'm not going to do it. We'll see you Bye. later, Charlie. Manos arriba. What is an antique firearm? This pistol in my left hand was made in 1885. This one in my right hand was made in 1903. They look almost identical but one is an antique and one is not. The federal statutes say that in order to be considered an antique firearm, it must have been made in 1898 or older. There are a few exceptions to this rule, but for the most part, if your firearm was made in 1898 or older, it is a true antique firearm. Why is that important to us? Because antiques fall under a category of curios and relics and do not have to go through the FFL paperwork when transferred. FFL being Federal Firearms License Paperwork. So, again, 1898 and older, you're golden. It's an antique firearm. And that has been today's helpful hint from Western Trading Post.